Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I uh, wanted to make a quick video just to go over some of the features of the new Instant Vap uh, line that we're carrying. Uh, we've had some modifications to them over the past uh, several months of us carrying them, some improvements. Uh, there's also been a lot of confusion on the market about some of these improvements and why they've been done. So, uh, so I hope to do some testing today to share that with you. So stay tuned. So I want to go over the battery protection feature uh, in the Instant Vap. There isn't any specific differences between the two units. I have two here, one with battery protection, one without, from the outside. So the only way that you'll be able to tell there was a, a small batch of them, I guess, that were made originally, they have a different chip in them. If it goes below the 15 volts during use, then it's not battery protected and you have to turn it off at the 15 volts. That being said, I'm gonna explain all that in this video. What I will be talking about will be in reference to both DeWalt, Milwaukee, uh, et cetera batteries, but they're the two most common in the market currently. I have some diagrams that I'll put up on the screen. This is just a taken apart five amp hour Milwaukee battery like I have here. It shows that there are 10 18650 batteries in them. There is, uh, and I'll have all the references and stuff down below in the description just in case so you can go back and look for more detail and we can kind of pay credit to whose uh, research papers I pulled from. 18650 means the length of the cell is 65 millimeters and its diameter is 18 millimeters. Uh, zero is the shape of the cylinder. So you can, you can see that both are pink. That's not to say that this is just a simulation or something. So. Anyway, they do have 18650 batteries in them. That just goes into a little bit of the background and history of the battery itself. All right, so today I'm gonna to be going over the M18, the 20 volt max, XR, I think it is. Any, any of those, these square batteries that will fit the instant bat. So anyway, the technology is all the same across the board because it, lipos are a chemical reaction that stores energy at a pretty high, high level and then it tapers off at the end and the goal is to catch it right before it tapers off because as it tapers off you have a lot of issues with life loss and, and all that but I'll, I'll get into all that within this video. Regardless, what I'm going to do right now is show you that I've got three batteries, one's full, one's half and one's completely empty. So the claim on the market right now um, from some of the knockoffs that are coming onto the market is that the batteries have the battery protection built into them, that they don't need any protecting at all, and there was no point in uh, Instant Bat deciding to put this proprietary battery protection chip on them. So let's test that out. I'll test it with one of the Milwaukee drills. I just don't have enough of the DeWalt stuff, so I decided to just uh, show you one of the batteries, but this whole test will be on the Milwaukee one. So you can see that this one moves. If I push the user interface here, it'll show that I have two bars. This is gonna be my half. I'm gonna set this aside for testing purposes. Um, this one, you can see, lights up but won't do anything at all. This is going to be my dead battery. You can see that it blinks there, lets you know as a user that it is dead. So I'll show you what voltage that is as well. This is, by elimination, going to be the full battery. There you go. So I'm going to take uh, and set these two aside for now. So now that we've proven that there is some sort of battery protection here, so I just want to show you the difference really quickly between the two instant apps. So you know as a customer, if you have one of these previously, if yours is battery protected, if it's not, uh, if it's not, we are within the new year of 2023, we're gonna allow people to send them in for a small fee. At, I think we're targeting like $65 and we'll cover the return shipping of the unit. Um, to go ahead and put that chip in it. It takes about an hour and a half of my time to, to put the chip in and test it, but rather than force you to buy a whole new unit and, and all that, you know, I'd, I'd rather you just be able to get a new chip put in it if you need it. It does have a voltage meter. You're spending 20 seconds looking at the device or so while it's doing its treatment. So it's not really necessary for most people, but you should have some sort of interface to be able to be aware of your battery voltage at a minimum. So anyway, you'll see that I have one that I have our sticker on and one that I do not. I'm not sure which one is the battery protected. I, I know that one has it, one doesn't. But anyway, so I will start with our full battery to show that both units will turn on. Now I'll keep the heaters turned off. That's one of the good things about the instant bath. It's got a power switch to keep the heater off. So I can do this kind of testing and I get burned and not have everything heating up and all. So you'll see that this turns on, it, it boots up. Our voltage is reading 19.8 volts. So that's just about a fully charged battery. I would consider that a full charge battery. So we put it in here. 
19.8 again, it booted up correctly, there you go. So we've proven that both units work and they're both functional, so now we'll move ahead over here. Now we'll determine which one has battery protection built in, like the tools do at Milwaukee, same with the wall, using the dead battery that's blinking here. You see that turned on? So it will allow, if I turn it on, it'll climb, start climbing from the 61 degrees because it'll start heating, let me move my hand, 62, 63, 64. So it'll continue to climb there, showing that it's pushing it below its threshold of the 15 volts that they cut off at, which is not good. So if I were to put this on here, you'll see no lights light up whatsoever. I turn it on, I turn it off, I, I really can't do anything else to try and push it. You'll see that it's blinking that it's dead. It won't even try to push past that threshold. So I just want to go back here and show what voltage this is at. So we're 15.6 right here. So about 15 volts or so they cut off. Actually, I stand corrected. The instant vap will cut off at 15.2, I believe, and they then to turn it on, you have to put a battery in that's above 17, I think it's 17 and a half volts. So you need basically a three quarter full battery and then it will allow you to deplete it down to 15, but it won't let you put a 15 in and then try to work a little energy out of it. It just, it, it's not worth it. It's just damaging your batteries and we value your product, your tools and batteries, just like you should, um, you know, it's very important to us. So I want to explain why all this is so important. Um, you know, these batteries are very expensive and you don't want to damage it using a tool, um, trying to help your bees and then being, you know, you'd be out a couple hundred more dollars. Maybe it would take a season or two for them to be depleted. So DOD stands for depth of discharge. So this says here, and this is from the same, same article. Uh, it's a, it's a huge report. Um, it, it's pretty neat. So, the DOD depth of discharge has a dominant effect on the cycle life of lithium ion batteries. Deep discharges can cause pressure in lithium ion cells and damage negative electrode sites, which accelerates capacity loss and possible cell damage. As shown in figure 3.7, at higher, the higher the cycling DOD, the shorter the battery, the battery cycle life. So that being said, you really don't want to go past that 15 volt because, and, I, and I'll find a diagram to show, um, they basically run flat and then they just kind of taper off and you want to catch them at the peak of that hill. And really, you won't be able to heat a whole lot beyond it. It's pretty important to not have your batteries that low. These tools are very valuable investments. I've got commercial guys who run them in 10,000 hive operations. I've got several of those now. Uh, I've got guys who have just a few hives and you know they do the job or hives at remote yards and all that. The carrying cases make them very portable, but the way that you make these things last a long time is protecting your batteries and making sure that you know you as a consumer are educated on what you're buying and you know what you're needing as far as a safe product to you. So Anyway, I hope this cleared up some of the confusion that's in the market right now. I really, you know, will advocate for beekeepers. This is a very personal mission for me to help support beekeepers. You know, I'm, I'm paired up with a handful of very good uh, people, amazing people in the beekeeping community who just care about beekeepers and want everybody to, you know, grow. I mean, it, Greg says it all the time that a, a good tide raises all ships and, you know, everybody works together everybody will get better together. Through education like this, I hope that you know we can do that. So if you have any further questions, feel free to leave it down below in the, in the comments or anything. Feel free to share. Uh, we need to kind of have some support in fighting this miscommunication and misinformation that's being spread out there. It's just the nature of the beast. When you build a good product, people are bound to try and copy it. I have no problem with competition. I don't like when they lie to people, especially to our customers, because I care. And that really irritates me. So anyway, uh, that being said, uh, I hope this was informational. I can't wait to see all you at Hive Life 2023. If you're watching this later in the year, you're going to want to get your tickets early for 2024. If you didn't, it's going to be a crazy show. I'm going to try and film some while I'm down there, but normally I'm talking so much to all of our customers, just trying to share information and talk about products and and all that, that it's gonna be crazy. If you will be there, be sure to stop by. Uh, we will have a sweepstakes, not a giveaway, but a sweepstakes 
that's all predetermined numbers and all that stuff. Everybody's got a fair chance. I think it's one in fifteen hundred to to be awarded a GoPro. I believe it's a Series Ten. I, I'll try and post a picture or something. Uh, I posted in the High Life Conference chat. But anyway, uh, there's no purchase, no anything. It's just something that I want to do to try and encourage somebody to step out into the YouTube atmosphere, film what they do as an operation. By talking about things and sharing it with the community, you also educate yourself and others and give people another perspective to help themselves learn and grow. So I believe it's a very important tool. I didn't want to have to be the one to go. You're showing the most potential, so that's why we kind of set up this random odds, one in 1,500. We looked up all the laws and stuff in Tennessee to make it legal. And yeah, so we're, we're really excited for that. Be sure to stop down and say hi to us. And yeah. Have a good uh, holidays, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you there.